My name is Lee Dickinson, and I have lived on the shores of White Lake almost my entire life, except for the first seven years of my marriage. Um, I was Lee Lundell, and the Lundell family has owned Bellevue Resort for uh, many, many years when it was uh, in business. So I'm going to give you a brief history, actually it's pretty thorough, of the research I've done on Bellevue Resort and the family members who uh, started this resort. <clears throat> To start with, our, our roots were in Sweden, and that's where the Lundell family was born. And my great-great-grandfather was Per Adolf Lundell, and he, he was born in Braidsboda, Uppsala, Sweden, in 1842. He came to America in 1869 and worked in a cabinet shop with his brother Carl in Philadelphia. He married Mathilda Anna Nyman, and he became a citizen in 1880. Uh, they had two sons, Charles, who died from teething at six months, and Mandorf Adolf Lundell, who was born in 1873, and he was my grandfather. Another relative that came over was Pear's sister, Charlotta, and she was the youngest of the six children who survived. There were originally 12 children in the Lundell family. Six survived. Um, Charlotta Ulrika Jansdotter, or Lundell, was Per's sister, and she was also born in Sweden in 1845. She came to America in 1880 aboard the ship the Britannic. And we know she went to Philadelphia, where two of her brothers were, but she was also found in New York, San Francisco, and Chicago. She married Daniel G. Smith, and they owned a Chicago shoe store on State Street. She was very tired of his drinking and his gambling and they traded the shop in Chicago for Bellevue Resort in Whitehall, Michigan. And it seems that Daniel continued to drink and gamble even in the countryside. Uh, so they were eventually divorced and I'll get into that a little bit later and they battled over the ownership of Bellevue Resort. Uh, from this point on, I'm going to talk about Charlotta and call her C.U. She was known in the White Lake area as Mrs. Smith or C.U. Smith, and then all of her family called her Auntie. In 1896, she bought Bellevue Hotel. Uh, it was a former farm, and they took boarders in, and then eventually it became a hotel. That's the way many of the resorts in the White Lake area began. So Daniel G. and Charlotta Ulrika Lundell Smith um, bought it by means of an exchange of certain property for property known as Bellevue Summer Resort. Being 100 acres more or less, said contract is dated March 23, 1896 and signed by Elizabeth F. and Adam Seckenberger. Um, a deed for the resort is dated, as I said, April 23, 1896 and it states that the resort was also purchased with $9,000 to Elizabeth F. Sickenhammer and, or Sickenberger and her husband Adam Sickenberger. This deed only has the name Charlotte U. Smith on it, and that's a very important fact to know. So in 1901, C.U.'s brother Per Adolf Lundell and his son Mandorf, my grandfather, uh, of Philadelphia visited and uh, to see the resort and to see the farm because the resort also included a farm. In 1902 the Smiths were divorced. They had been married for 20 years. This made the headlines on the front page of the Whitehall Forum on the January 9, 1902 edition. Also in 1902, CU's nephew Mandorf and family came to the resort for the summer months. Mandorf managed the resort and there was an article in the Whitehall Forum, August 1st, 1902, about Mandorf and the resort. At this time, Mandorf had four children, Edith, Natalie, Bill, and Frank, and his wife, Nettie, also, of course, was here. They stayed on and stayed in Whitehall through 1904, managing the resort. The cottage that was built on the farm site of South Shore Drive was constructed from timbers cut by Mandorf and a crew of men. This cottage was torn down in the 1980s, but the back cement stairs and the well pit built by uh, Frank Lundell Sr. still remain. Also in 1902, a party of 90 people came all at once from Chicago and stayed at the resort. In 1904, 
a 50-foot pier was swept away by the winter's ice. This was a, a serious thing because all the ferries would come and drop the resorters off at the pier. On April 7th, Charlotte May Lundell was born at the resort. We still have the bed in which she was born. It was a bed in the resort, and we recently had it refinished by Sharon Fisk at Wildflower Antiques refinishers and um, we have that upstairs and we use that as our guest room formerly our daughter's room so hopefully we'll have a picture of that a little bit later on that bed has quite a history because it was originally in the Dalton estate across the lake in Montague and when they had an estate sale my great great aunt C.U. Smith purchased it and when my parents were married she gave it to them as a wedding gift so it has a long long history that Dalton estate across the lake was eventually bought by Father Alexander Dowie, the man who claimed he could walk on water. In 1905, a flood damages the crops that are grown on Bellevue Farm, and a new 35-foot pier is built to accommodate the ferries. The bridge across the creek down at the bottom of the hill on South Shore Drive also is swept away because of the flood. And there are also many articles in the local paper, the Whitehall Forum at that time, talking about the number of resorters that have come to the resort. In 1906, the barn between the resort and the cottage, which is now 5912 South Shore Drive, is moved across the road to the middle of the field. The cement base of the silo is still visible where the barn used to be in the middle of that field, and that whole area now is owned, at this writing, uh, by Robert Stangy. In 1915, the recreation hall was added to the resort. So it's increasing in popularity and growing as the years go by. And in 1921, a large wraparound porch is built on three sides of the hotel, on the lake side. And uh, over the next few years, however, strong winds ruin the porch and it is never rebuilt. In 1928, an ad is placed in the White Lake Yacht Club News that the resort is for sale. And I'm going to read that ad to you from the news. Uh, Bellevue Lake Frontage for Sale. Mrs. C.U. Smith, for the past 32 years, owner and operator of Bellevue Resort, offers the entire lake frontage of 1,000 feet for sale, either in lots of 100 by 300 feet, more or less, or entire footage, frontage in one piece. And for information, write Mrs. C.U. Smith. At this time, the resort had this description in their brochure. Our guests are cultured and refined people often of ample means, but always of respectability and good standing. Bellevue is strictly a family hotel. We entertain no excursion trade whatsoever, but concentrate all our energies on making our regular guests sojourn with us homelike and comfortable. Evil influences of no sort are permitted here, and wives and children who of necessity come unattended will be properly cared for and their surroundings will be as pure as if they were in their own homes. The resort consists of a main building containing the large dining room, our newly added sun parlor, and a number of sleeping rooms and three sleeping cottages. The dining room, 20 or rather 30 by 40 feet, is surrounded by wide verandas from which may be enjoyed a beautiful view of the lake through the dense foliage of the grove. The sun parlor furnished with easy chairs and with the piano and phonograph is a favorite gathering place for our guests at all hours. Bellevue is electric lighted throughout and equipped with running spring water and sanitary plumbing. There is a bathroom in the main building with running hot and cold water for the convenience of our guests. So in this day it was not necessary to have private baths. There was a bath that all the resorters used. Um, in 1931, Ella Snell Guerra and James Clement Snell buy the lot number three cottage at 5912 South Shore Drive from C.U. Smith. Ella Snell Guerra was my mother's mother, so she was my grandmother from Oak Park, Illinois. And she and her brother, who was a bachelor for many years of his life, um, bought the cottage together for a summer home. They had rented it up to this point. In 1933, on January 1st, a fire broke out in the cottage across the road from the hotel, that cottage that my, my grandfather had built. Um, Frank Lundell, Sr., notices it while sitting in the kitchen of the hotel, and he runs to the cottage and drags out a burning mattress. The fire was caused by a metal mop handle 
coming in contact with a wire. The fire department had to be called, and in those days, you had to pay a fee in order to have the fire department come to your aid if a fire broke out. If you hadn't paid that fee, they would not come. And fortunately, Bellevue had paid the fee. In 1936, Carlota Lundell Smith, age 91, sells the resort to Henry Hislop of Oak Park, Illinois. Up to this point, she had been running the resort all by herself, and she's 91. However, my father, Frank Lundell Sr., was living at the resort year-round to help her. In 1936, he was 34 years old, so he had been there for a number of years helping run the resort. Um, over the next 10 years, after 1936, the resort changed hands several times. In 1938, Bellevue Resort and the farm are put up for sale for $8,000 by its new owners. But CU says there's no market for it. From letters written at the time, we know the barn is still in the middle of the field across from the resort. And Franklin Adolph Lundell Sr. and Virginia Mary Guerra are married on October 19, 1938. In 1939, Frank and Virginia Lundell move into the summer cottage at 5912 and begin the long process of renovating it and winterizing it. In 1942, the Lundells become owners of lot number three cottage, which is 5912 South Shore Drive. And that's where I spent about the first seven, eight years of my life uh, living in that house. In the 19, late 1940s, um, the resort was owned by Fry and Honiger. And what they charged were the following. The rates, including all meals, were $35 a week. Children under 12 years old paid half price. The cottages were $30 per week. When my parents ran the resort, the brochure states that the rates were $7.50 for a single, including meals, or $6.75 each, with two in a room. Weekly, it was $50 for a single, and $45 each, two in a room. Children under 12 were half rate. If you wanted to rent a cottage by this point, and this is like 1946 or so, uh, for a week, it would be $50, and for a month, $185. And uh, June and September after Labor Day, you could do it for $40 a week. It was interesting also to read the means of transportation in getting to the resort. Back in C.U. Smith's day, it says, The Goodrich Transit Company, Steamer Carolina, leaves Michigan Boulevard, Bridge Dock, Chicago at 7.45 p.m. Friday and Saturday, arriving at Sylvan Beach early the following morning, from which place direct connection for Bellevue was made by bus or ferry. By this time, in the 1940s, it says the place can easily be reached from Chicago or any other large city by Greyhound, which stops at the lodge, that's Greyhound Bus, or by railroad or boat to Muskegon, then bus to Whitehall, where we will pick you up. And by the time my parents owned it, they are saying by automobile from Muskegon North on US 31 to Whitehall and Scenic Drive down South Shore of White Lake to Bellevue, by Greyhound bus direct to the door, by plane to Muskegon Airport, by boat from Milwaukee to Muskegon, by Greyhound to Bellevue, by rail to Muskegon, and then Greyhound to Bellevue. I recall as a child having the Greyhound bus stop directly in front of the resort and I recall all of the um, hot, huge soda pop trucks coming, and they always gave us uh, a soda pop when they came. So we always looked forward to the delivery of that. Um, it, was, it was great memories of the resort and knowing so many different people from far away and looking forward to meeting new people all the time. Uh, in 1944, Carlota Ulrika Lundell Smith dies on December 5th, just short of her 100th birthday. And I have an article from the White Lake Forum that tells about her death. Mrs. Smith, oldest White Lakes, Mrs. C.U. Smith, who in her day was one of the best known resort operators in White Lake and who for some years has been the oldest resident of the White Lake area, died at her home Monday evening. She would have been 100 years old in March. Mrs. Smith had been surprisingly active and alert in spite of her near century of living. She had spent 76 years in this area and had seen vast changes in the resort industry from the days of the summer border to the present half billion dollar a year industry. 
She was born March 13, 1845 in Uppsala, Sweden, and came to this country when she was 20. She came to White Lake in 1868, well, that's not quite right, it was more like 1896, and had resided in this area since. And surviving are her two nephews, Franklin Lundell of White Lake and Gunnar Lundell of Muskegon. So she had been the owner of Bellevue Resort from 1896 to 1936. And her death and ownership, of course, is, was written in the Whitehall form that I just read to you. In 1945, Frank and Virginia Lundell put a basement under the house at 5912 with the help of Russell Johnson. And there's kind of an interesting side story there. Our son-in-law is Russell Johnson, and he is the um, grandson of this Russell Johnson, who was in business with my father in a cement and plastering business. So they experience a mild tornado while they're in the process of putting a basement under the house. In 1946, Belver Resort is bought by the partnership of Frank and Virginia Lundell and her brother and his wife, Alfred and Mildred Guerra. Frank Lundell puts in a cement drive to the Lower Lakeshore Grove cottages, and that's the area in which we live, down in the Grove. In 1949, the Lundells buy out the Guerra share of the resort. They begin preparing the dining room and game room of the resort to be their future home by making partitions and installing a coal burning furnace. In 1951, the outer three floors of Bellevue Resort are torn down by Mr. Ferris Hale of Montague for $300. The work is done between August 1st and September 15th, and the agreement was that Mr. Hale could save as much of the material as he wanted for other building projects, including 10 doors, plumbing fixtures, and piping gutters and bricks. Those were the days where you used anything you could um, in any, any kind of building. The dining room and the game room were made into a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath house. A front porch is made from the area that was the former kitchen of the hotel. Most of the work was done by Frank and Virginia Lundell. And as I said before, Frank Lundell, my father, had a cement and plaster business and he stuccoed the entire exterior of the house. In 1953, the Lundells added a two-car garage and a lower dining room, kitchen, and bathroom to the house. This becomes a summer apartment in which the family of seven lives while the house is rented to clients of Greestick Corporation of Muskegon. The renting of the house during the summer continues for at least 10 years. Besides renting the house, the Lundells also have a remodeled caretaker's house on the east side of their house that they rent as a cottage in the summer. The original resort property included several cottages in the grove along uh, the lakeshore. Over time, three cottages are sold as well as two empty lots. Four lots and the former caretaker's house plus the house at 5912 South Shore Drive are saved for the five Lundell children, Allison, Lee, Frank, John, and Margie. Virginia Lundell's mother, Ellis Nell Guerra, lived in the, uh, the 5912 home from 1951 until her death in 1985 at age 95. In 1975, John Proctor Lundell built a house at 5906 South Shore Drive. In 1976, Jerry and Lee Lundell Dickinson built a house at 5800 South Shore Drive on the shore of White Lake. They later buy the lot next to them that was given to Franklin Adolph Lundell Jr. In 1977, Marjorie Ellen Lundell Bronsick Smith moves into 5912 South Shore Drive. Eventually, the house is sold to Otto and Nancy Borgeson, and they sell to son Andy and Jenny Buck, the present owners at this writing. In 1978, Franklin Otto Flandell Sr. died on June 17th at age 76. In 2003, Virginia Lundell dies on January 21st at age 84. And in 2004, George and Pat Schraft of Williamston, Michigan buy the house property and the lake lot in front of it. They demolish the house and rebuild a summer weekend home. Before the building of that house, White Lake was totally visible from South Shore Drive and in 2006 Ralph and Alice and Louise Lundell Taggart add a Lakeview screened-in porch and vinyl siding to the former caretaker's house, now their summer cottage. So all that remains of the original Bellevue Resort are the cottages that are located at 5912 South Shore Drive, the home of Andy and Jenny Buck, 
5874 South Shore Drive, the remodeled caretaker's house of Ralph and Allison Taggart. 5782 South Shore Drive, the remodeled cottage of Robert Van de Keefe to Fremont, Michigan. And 5768 South Shore Drive, the remodeled and relocated cottage of crows at the base of their drive. So Bellevue Resort lives on um, in the fact that some of these places are still here and um, we have such a rich family history and memories of the times that we spent as children growing up on the resort and growing along the shores of this beautiful White Lake. Um, this chair that is is here is one that's originally from the resort from the dining room and uh, we had wildflower refinishers also refinish this chair for us. We have two of these chairs and I think everybody in our family has one or two chairs from the resort. And they're very handy little chairs uh, to sit in for, I have mine at my sewing table and one at a desk. But this is the original dining area of the resort. It was a tropical theme even though it was on the shores of White Lake. Um, the, the columns, the support columns were palm trees and I remember the coconuts hanging from them the decanters that we used uh, for pouring coffee and um, we as a family would also eat in here quite often or be in the kitchen area and eat in there. Um, there are lots of memories of the resort. It was a three-story high hotel out by the road and as small children we thought the third floor was haunted because we could hear noises up there and what it actually was was plaster falling off the walls. The third floor by that time was not rented because it was in disrepair. So only the first and second floors were rented. And it was a very interesting um, hotel to wander through as a child because it was just like going on an adventure all the time. I can remember people lining up outside the one bathroom so that they could take baths. And um, I also remember one of the remarks made by C.U. Smith that my father told me about was some of the, the boarders complained that there was too long of a line for bathing in the bathroom and she said you've got a whole lake out there go bathe in the lake she was a very very um, stern and um, take charge person and so she she didn't mince words when it it came to um, running the place the way she thought it should be run um, other things that we did as children I remember when the resort was being um, torn down and walking in bare feet in the front yard and getting nails in my feet and uh, having to have soak them in Epsom salts or sometimes we even had to get stitches if we tore our feet open enough. So uh, there are lots and lots of memories. My father's old cement truck that was parked outside uh, the hotel quite often and we could push the starter button and make it it would never go anywhere, just jerk a little bit, but we had fun doing that too. So, uh, and my father always had a cement mixer handy because he was always putting cement one place or another. Um, I remember my aunts coming from Philadelphia in the east to visit us during the summer. And of course, my grandmother would come with her good friend and stay in the resort. Um, my grandmother Lundell also lived in Philadelphia and I remember her as a small child. She died in 1949, so I was about five when she died and she was just a sweet, lovely lady and we always looked forward to the visits and going to the train station to pick up our aunts and our grandma and have them visit us. So it's a, a very nice warm fuzzy feeling when you think back at the resort days of Bellevue Resort. This is the very first picture we have of Bellevue Resort and it was extremely faded. It's from 1896 and thanks to Paul Kleinfelter uh, he was able to scan it and uh, put some more color in it so we can actually see what the resort looked like. So this is right after the farmhouse and the boarding days before it actually became a hotel. There's nothing on it that says it's a hotel. Um, this is my great-grandfather, Per Adolf Lundell, who uh, was responsible for, for having my grandfather, Mandorf, and he was the one who managed the resort in 1902 through 1904 and then um, family members would always come out here from Philadelphia in the summer to help C.U. Smith run the resort. So it seems like the whole family got involved in running this resort. This is a younger C.U. Smith. I have a picture of her in a little while that shows her in 1932. But this is the way she looked uh, probably shortly after she came to America. And this is my grandfather, Mandorf Adolf Lundell, and this is a picture of him in about 1902. So this is what he looked like 
when he was running the resort. And here we have Bellevue Resort in 1906, and it has actually Bellevue, I think, hotel on it. I can't remember if it's hotel or resort, but you can probably read it from the picture. And you can see that before, it had kind of like an open veranda around, and now they've put a roof on it. So it has a nice porch, front porch, facing the road, which at this time was still not paved. The road was not paved until 1921. This is the cottage that my grandfather built from timbers that he cut in the woods here. And this is where C.U. Smith would live in the winter. She would move out of the big hotel in the winter, close it down, and move to this little cottage. And so my father also lived there with his great aunt uh, and took care of her during the winter months as well and made sure that the resort was in good shape. This is one of the original cottages of the resort. It is now where the berries live on South Shore Drive. And um, the original cottage was actually torn down and they built a new house in its place. This is the cottage that my maternal grandmother would rent. My parents met because of Bellevue Resort. My uh, mother and her brother and her uncle and my grandmother would come to this cottage and rent it from Bellevue Resort. And of course my father worked at Bellevue Resort so the romance began and they were married in 1938. And this shows from the lakeside the two cottages, the two original cottages. Um, and so they looked pretty much the same from the front and from the back. And you had a little porch front side and back side on, on both of these. This is a picture of the Lundell family from 1916. And my father, well, of course this is my grandfather, and my father is here. So at this time he is about 14, 15 years old. And he was actually leaving his family in the summer and coming and working at Bellevue Resort. Sometimes other family members would be with him, but quite often he would be on his own and he would come by train. This is the huge porch that was built. This is uh, 1906, and so it gave an elevated view of White Lake. Um, it was a beautiful, beautiful porch, which I never saw because it was gone by the time I came around. Here you see Bellevue Resort from the road, and you can see the front porch with the veranda, and you also can see how the wraparound porch was on the lakeside. And you see also that it was three stories. The, the top floor was smaller, and uh, that's what we thought as kids was haunted. And here again is the resort, and, the, and it's before they added the recreation room. The recreation room was added on this part. Um, and when it came time to ripping the whole thing down, all of this went up to a portion of the kitchen. And the kitchen became our front porch of our house. Across the street um, was a farm, and they raised their own vegetables and fruits. This is my father in 1918 with a, a cow from across the street at the at the barn. And they would also have horses for the riders. This is 1926 where uh, people could go horseback riding when they came to Bellevue Resort. And here we see the fall picture of the Bellevue farm with all the haystacks. And this top picture, this is my grandmother and my mother and my uncle riding some of those horses in 1926 at the resort. The resort had an expansive beach. It had a thousand feet on the beach. And this is the view of the beach. It's not a tame beach like we would think of it today, but um, in those days everything was natural. So they loved having this expansive beach. And this is my grandmother and my mother and my uncle walking on the beach. By 19... 32, this was C.U. Smith, and she passed away another um, 12 years later. So you can see she's quite elderly at this point, and she is still running the resort. This is a view of the pier that Bellevue Resort had. And I think this is the one that was washed away uh, at one point and, um, from the ice. And this is what the boats used to pull up to, to let the passengers off. And in 1938, my parents were married. They ran the resort with her brother, Alfred, and his wife, Mildred. So these are pictures of Alfred and Mildred in about the, the 40s, early 40s. So the two couples ran the resort for a couple of years, I'd say. 
and they all had young children, so it was quite a challenge. Oh. Uh, in 1945, my parents, this picture, um, put the basement under their home. This was quite an undertaking. They didn't have all the equipment that we have today. Uh, it was by brute strength <laughs> that they did it. Um, and so Russell Johnson helped my father, Frank Lundell Sr., put the basement under the house. And this was the layout of the resort. My mother did a drawing of the resort. So this shows the main part of the house. What is outlined in red is what became our family home when they tore the, the front three stories down. And um, so you can see, I think it says that there were... 21 rooms. I think that's on the other sheet. Well, I don't have that on here. I think there were 21 rooms total. So this is the, the final floor of the hotel. This is the demolition of the hotel, the, the front three floors that took place in 1951. And all of that lumber was um, used again. They saved it, stacked it up, anything they could use, they did. So who knows where that lumber is today. This is what became of Bellevue Resort. This was the house that was there for years, and this house was just torn down in 2003, or was it four? 2004, when we sold the house. And um, now a new building is there, a new house. The recreation room was here. This is my father's old cement truck and cement mixer. And um, that was the recreation hall that was built like in the 1920s, added on to the resort. Okay, and I, the final thing I have is the guest register. This is from 1947, 46-47 showing where the guests came from, many of them from Chicago, from Indiana, you know, Michigan. I looked all through it thinking there'd be some from St. Louis, Missouri, and I did not see any. So apparently they were not coming up in 1946-47. I think that was a little bit later on. But many, many, many from the Chicago area. All right, this is the bed that my Aunt Charlotte was born in in 1904, and it originally came from across the lake in the Dalton Estate, and the Dalton Estate was eventually bought by Father Alexander Dowie. So my great-great-aunt C.U. Smith bought this bed for the resort, and uh, the only one of my father's siblings born there was Charlotte in 1904. So it has a, a big history to it, and uh, Sharon Fisk of Wildflower, Refinishers just finished it for us, repaired it, and uh, refinished, and and we just we love it in this room. Uh, it's a bed that you literally have to climb into to go to bed, so so it has a lot of history to it, and we enjoy that. Okay, this is um, the five Lundell siblings, taken probably in the 1950s, and so this is what we looked like when we lived at Bellevue Resort remodeled. This is my grandmother, Nettie Lundell, and um, she would come on the train from Philadelphia. And this is the way I remember her because uh, she died in 1949, and uh, she was just a very dear, sweet person. So enjoyed uh, seeing her summers when she would come. All right, this photo is of my grandmother, Nettie Lundell, in the probably 1940s, and my sister Allison and I in the rowboat together from Bellevue Resort. And... Um, the picture above here is of my grandmother Nettie when she's younger with my um, Uncle Ray, my dad, and my Aunt Charlotte amongst some of the resorters. Where the white is in the background was the women's bathhouse of the resort, and that's where our house is presently built on the shores of White Lake. So that is history of Bellevue Resort since 1896. Thank you.